Congratulations, you just got yourself a Roadcaster Duo or possibly even a Roadcaster Pro 2, and now you want to set it up for your content creation, YouTube, Twitch, streaming. You want to get console audio added into it. You want to set it up for OBS. I got you covered. My name is Francisco. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, what I need you to do is I need to make sure that you've got everything plugged into your computer. Basically, the USB cable that's provided with the Roadcaster Duo plugged into your computer as well any XLR microphones connected to the back of the Roadcaster Duo as well, any sort of speakers, monitors, headphones, what have you, get all that plugged in and ready to go so that we can now move on to the next step. What you're gonna need to do after that, once everything's plugged in and set up, is that you need to go to Rode's website and you need to download the Rode Central application, okay? Everything that you're going to do to set this up, you can do it through the Rode Central application or the actual Roadcaster device itself. But for all intents and purposes, because it's going to be a little easier to show you, we're going to go ahead and do it via the Rode Central app right now. So in order to start, let's go ahead and get this fader set up. And you're going to go over here to audio setup. And you're going to see that you have four different options right here, each one representing one of the four faders that come on the Roadcaster Duo. I don't know. I don't remember what comes on by default. OK, but basically I have my microphone set up as my first fader. I have USB one as my second fader and then USB 2 as my third fader. I am currently not using the fourth fader yet. All right. Now you must be wondering, why do I have USB 1 and USB 2? Well, the reasons for that is that you're able to connect the Rodecaster Duo with both USB ports to a single PC. All right. This entire video is aimed at anybody with a single streaming or content creation PC setup. And a lot of the routing that we're going to do specifically for PC audio and games and console audio, in order to achieve that and in order to achieve independent control of each one, we have to set up this Rodecaster Duo to be connected to the same PC with two different USB cables. The cable that comes provided with the Rodecaster Duo gets plugged into a USB-C port on the PC. The second cable, I just so happen to have another Rode USB-C cable, but I don't have a second USB-C port on my computer. So I did use a USB-C to USB-A adapter that I had lying around as an extra piece that came with God knows what. If you have an adapter, perfect, you're good to go. Go ahead and use that. If you don't have an adapter, I'm sure you can find one super cheap. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's any sort of requirement as far as it's gotta be USB 3, USB 2, doesn't, I don't know. I have mine connected to a USB 2.0 port, so don't think I have much of an issue there. And I'll double check that just to make sure my math is correct, right? Once you've got that going on, in my setup, I have the first fader set up to my uh, microphone. Now let's see, will it show you anything here? No, it doesn't. But if we go to the actual Rodecaster device itself, you can see here, I've got the first fader set up to be the microphone. And if I press this button up the top, which matches the color that I have assigned as the microphone fader, uh, this is where I can start messing around with a lot of different options as far as post-processing or processing is concerned for the microphone itself using the Aphex processing that is on board with the Rodecaster Duo. They have different presets for different microphones. Of course, I'm using the Shure SM7B, so I've gone with the SM7B preset, made a couple of tweaks, boom, problem solved. That's pretty self-explanatory there, right? The second fader is where we start getting into audio routing. Okay, so the first second fader here is for USB number one. I have everything set up in Windows, and I'm gonna show you here in just a second. I have everything set up in Windows to go through the speakers for Rodecaster Duo Main Stereo. And we're gonna click here, and you can see here, Rodecaster Duo Main Stereo. That means all of my audio from my PC is going out through the USB one port, which is assigned to the second fader right here on my Rodecaster Duo, which is the orange light that you see it might even, no, it looks orange on the video, all right? So everything, everything coming out of my PC is going to Rodecaster Duo Main Stereo, AKA fader number two. Now you can get into the nitty gritty and start kind of really using the virtual outputs that are come included in the Rodecaster Duo software and the Rode Central software. I'm not gonna go that deep into it. My goal here is to just to get you set up as quickly as possible so you can start using this thing so you can see how amazing of a product you just got. The next fader that we have here is going to be the USB 2. All right, now this is a reminder. This is the second USB port that is on the back of the Rodecaster Duo. This is also plugged in to my one computer. Okay, so for USB number two, the only thing I use this for is for my PlayStation 5 audio. Now, you could hypothetically take a USB cable, plug it into your console and plug that into the back of the Rodecaster Duo. And it might work for a few seconds. And then after that, you're going to start getting a horrific sound coming out of your audio that you're just flat out not gonna be able to use for any of your content whatsoever. 
And if you do this, your initial thought might be that your device is broken or that something is wrong with your console. And I'm here to tell you that it's neither one of the cases. From what I understand and from the limited research that I've done, it just seems that the consoles and the Rodecaster are not designed to be quite compatible with one another just yet. But thankfully, there is a very easy workaround. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to be that guy. It might require you to get an extra cable or two. All right. The way I have it set up is I have an aux cord. I have one end plugged into the back of my gaming monitor, and I have another end plugged into the back of my motherboard sound card, specifically into the blue port, which is your line in port. When you have that set up and you've got it all plugged in, what you're gonna wanna do is this. We're gonna go ahead and go over here to sounds. It's a little hard to do this because I'm like really tall and then my desk is like super low. When you're in sounds, you're gonna go to recording and you're gonna find line in. You're gonna go to properties and we're gonna go to listen and you're gonna click in and check listen to this device. At that point, you should be able to click this drop down menu and you're going to find headphones, Rodecaster Duo secondary. You're going to select that and make sure that it's checked in, that it's selected and you're gonna hit apply and you're gonna hit okay. What's going to happen here is that any of the sound that you get coming from your gaming monitor, basically any sound that's going into the line and port is now going to be heard via the secondary Rodecaster Duo channel, which is USB number two. So as a result, on my third fader, I've got USB number two selected as the fader assignment for that fader. Jesus, I said that a lot, but you get what I'm saying, right? So now I can control the level of my PlayStation 5 audio with this fader, independently of my PC audio with fader number one, or well, technically fader number two, USB one. So USB one, all of my PC audio, and USB number two, fader number three, all of my PlayStation 5 audio right there. And that's it. You should not hear any sort of issues with your audio when you have it set up this way. This is how I've been using it since I got the Rodecaster Duo about a month and a half or two months ago. So now that you've got everything plugged into your Rodecaster Duo, we've assigned our faders. We've basically set a sort of distinction between USB 1 and USB 2, assigned each one to its own fader. Now we need to start routing everything in the Rodecaster device, all right? This is where things could get a little bit muddy if you're not entirely sure about what you're doing, and that's why I'm here. So you hit the gear at the top right corner of the screen here. You're gonna to go to outputs and we're gonna to go to routing, okay? It's gonna show you all the different items that you can assign routing to. We're gonna go ahead and go over to USB number one. Now you have main mix, mix minus, and custom. Main mix means that everything going into that channel is also coming out of it, all right? Mix minus is basically you're able to say that USB main input will not be included in the USB main stereo output. I'm not gonna lie. I could sit here and look at that for a little bit longer and try to identify really what it means, but I'm not going to waste your time doing that. I don't quite understand it because it doesn't matter. We're just gonna be using custom. All right. I don't want my microphone audio or USB two going into and out of USB one. So you can go ahead and let's pretend they're all active. You can click at the bottom right there and basically mute that fader or that channel for the output and the routing of this one specific channel. And we'll do the same here for USB two. And now USB one is only going to have USB one the items, outputs, levels, audio sources coming in and out of it. Let's go back. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over here to USB two and basically the exact opposite I don't want my mic audio going in and out of your USB 2. I don't want USB 1 audio coming in and out of USB 2. So I go ahead and mute those under custom. And I only have USB 2 audio, aka only my PlayStation 5 audio coming in and out of this channel. And that's a wrap. As far as the actual microphone audio is concerned, okay, and this is important for anybody who's going to use this in the program such as Discord, you're gonna notice here that I have USB chat one or USB one chat. And we're gonna once again, set this up via custom under routing because when we go and select our input devices for OBS and or Discord or some sort of party chat device or application, you're gonna set your input as USB chat, not USB microphone main stereo, whatever that, you know, something close to that. You're gonna basically make sure it's USB chat, all right? In doing so, you need to make sure that your routing is set up to custom and that you have USB one, USB two, whatever else is assigned to fader number four, unless you want it to be there, also disabled so that USB chat is only the microphone itself and nothing else. Now, last but certainly not least, you've got everything plugged in, you've got your faders assigned, we did our routing, you've got a distinction set up between USB 1, USB 2, now we need to get this set up in OBS. And it's actually very, 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 this is probably the easiest thing that you're about to do, okay? So pardon for the infinite me's, but here we go. All right, so you got OBS opened up, 
and um, we're gonna go to settings here, go to audio. I have everything here disabled, all right? I don't have anything going on here, nothing set up. I haven't changed anything. I just wanna show you that right now, all right? What you're going to do is you're going to set up inputs, okay? This is super, super, super important. You're going to set up sources as inputs, not outputs, for each individual fader that you have on your Roadcaster Duo. This is how I have it set up. So I have a input set up for Roadcaster Duo USB 2, which is this is going to control my PlayStation 5 audio. I have a fader set up for Roadcaster Duo Main, which is going to be everything coming in and in through USB 1. And I have an input source for Roadcaster Duo Mic, which if you look at this, it is the Roadcaster Duo Chat microphone. Remember I was saying you want to separate it as Roadcaster Duo Chat because it, it just, it works way better that way. You're not going to get everything under USB 1. If you do everything under USB 1, it's viable, but you're going to have to do a little bit more work as far as controlling the levels there or everything. I prefer to keep everything as separate as I possibly can. So you know this is working correctly because, uh, let me open up Spotify here. We know this is gonna work correctly because I'm gonna open up Spotify and you know he does such a great job of plugging his own stuff that we're gonna go to Stream Beats by uh, Harris Heller. We're just gonna listen to some stuff here. If this is working, you should be able to hear it. All right, I can see dual main. So if I pull my fader down, you should start hearing, actually you should hear nothing at all because my fader's all the way down now. Well, caution with your ears here, I'm about to turn it up quite a bit. As I start turning it up on the fader, it should start turning up on the actual Roadcaster device. If you set this up as an output, instead of an input, what's going to happen is that you will basically be controlling your own mix via the roadcaster and the audience stream mix you have to control via obs and that is very annoying so don't do that save yourself the headache just set it all up as inputs so that they hear your audience hears what you hear via your roadcaster device which you're controlling via the faders ladies and gentlemen at this point you're ready to rock and roll. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if it was in the comments below. If you have any other questions, please do let me know. Don't be afraid to ask. I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Until next time, be good to yourselves, be good to one another. Peace out. So if the gameplay is fun, but nothing really special, and if the visuals are great, but not standing out from the rest, and if the story is just okay, then what is it about The Witcher 3 that still makes it one of my top RPGs of all time? The answer is simply the world. Many RPGs are as good as, or in some cases, better than The Witcher 3 when looking at gameplay, visuals, and story, but not many RPGs deliver on the world aspect like CD Projekt Red did with The Witcher 3. 